Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making this adorable log cabin quilt. So if you're new to quilting, the log cabin quilt block is the super easy quilt block. It's perfect for beginners and it's also great for using up all of your stash and scraps. So here's what the traditional log cabin block looks like and it's just a cute series of strips sewn together. Now all my strips were the same size and that's what I'm gonna show in this video. But you can also make kind of wonky looking log cabins and just use up your scraps no matter what width that they are. So this is the perfect block for a beginner because it's all straight seams, nothing complicated. It's super easy to put together and I do have a PDF pattern for the quilt behind me. This one uses an entire jelly roll. It's also fat quarter friendly. If you want to use fat quarters you'll need 16 fat quarters or you could also do 32 fat eights if you want but in the pattern I have instructions for cutting a fat quarter or for cutting a jelly roll. Now I went ahead and made my quilt a little bit bigger because I wanted a larger quilt. If you're using a jelly roll you're going to have a little bit smaller quilt and all of that is in the PDF pattern. But let's go ahead and get started on making the super easy log cabin quilt block. So one of the cool things about log cabin quilts is they're pre-cut friendly and scrap friendly. So for this pattern you can use a fat quarter bundle, you can use a fat eighth bundle, or you can use a jelly roll and you'll be good to go and have a beautiful variety of fabrics to pick from. My finished quilt finishes at 62 by 76 but you can easily resize this quilt to anything you want simply by adding or removing blocks. You will need some background fabric. For that you'll need one and three quarters yards and then for the backing and batting you need four and three quarters yards and that is it. Of course you're going to need a ruler, a rotary cutter and you can use pins as well. I actually don't pin for this but I wanted to add them in here just in case um, if you're a new sewer you might want to pin your strips together and that can really help. Now log cabin blocks can get a little bit wonky and so one other thing you might consider using is Mary Ellen's best press and you can just press out your pre-cut strips before you go um, and this is really easy. You don't have to wait overnight. You just spray it and then iron your strip until it's dry and then you're good to cut and that can help your strips from getting super wonky. And then if you're wondering the quilt behind me was made using this jelly roll right here. I've had it in my stash for a while. It's called Catalina by Fig Tree and it just has some really beautiful bright springy colors in there and I loved it so much I thought you know what we're going to just do a whole quilt out of that. Um, but of course you can use your scraps as well. I think that's going to be it for supplies. Let's go ahead and get started. So I've gone ahead and cut out all of my pieces for this log cabin block and you're going to need two C squares, two D, two E, two F, two G, and one H square. Measurements will be in the description box below the video and of course they'll be in the PDF pattern as well. So these are two and a half inch squares, four and a half inch, six and a half inch, eight and a half, ten and a half, and twelve and a half inch strips all two and a half inches wide. And you're going to need two of each of these and then one of your H block. Now I do have the A's and B's here. These are going to be for your sashing and outside borders. So I don't have them in this video because we're just doing the block but I wanted to let you know those cutting instructions will be in the PDF pattern. So this block is actually really easy to assemble and so how we're going to do this is kind of in order. So we're going to sew our C blocks together first, then we're going to add our D blocks, then E, F, G, and finally our H block. So the first thing that we're going to do, and I'm just going to scoot this over a little bit so we can lay our block out, but we're going to take our C squares and just sew them together, right sides together, using a quarter inch seam allowance. And we can just press that to one side. Now because none of our seams are lining up at all we actually don't need to worry about which way we press this because there, uh, there's no seams that are going to be lining up or needing to nest. So I'm just going to press it up just like that and we've got that piece. Now we're going to grab our D squares and we're going to add those and we're going to add one to the right side and one to the bottom. It doesn't really matter which way you add them. I'm going to go ahead and do the light one on the side. So we'll go ahead and add that first. And so again everything's going to be done using a quarter inch seam allowance and then we'll come back and add this bottom piece. And I'll just set that seam and press it. And then I'm going to add our bottom piece. Again set that seam and press it. Next we're going to add our E squares and I'll take both of these strips and we're going to add one to the right side and then to the top. So we're basically just making this spiral out from the center so it's really easy. So let's go ahead and add this one 
and then we'll add our top piece. And I do like to press in between. Some people finger press and just press all at the end, but I do like to just have it be nice and flat as I'm going. Now we can add our top piece. Next, we're gonna grab our F pieces. And again, we're gonna add one to the right and one, or left and one to the bottom. So we're continuing on in our circle. And as long as you keep going the same direction all the way around, you'll be good to go. So here we are going this way. So our next one will be our side and our top. And I just lay it out as I go and see what I think looks best. I don't want those two greens together. So I think we'll do it this way. Now I think you could see on this block how easy it would be to just use scraps. This log cabin block is also a great quilt as you go block uh, because you can just be grabbing and adding uh, pieces as you go and it's just really easy. You can just grab from your stash pile. And my pieces are all two and a half inches wide which is gonna result in a 12 and a half inch block, uh, but I have seen people do just random width strips and they just trim off the excess kind of like you would do in a normal built as you go scenario. So all of these pieces are different widths. And here you go. Now you can turn these blocks any direction you want because they're all 12 and a half inches square. So it doesn't actually matter which direction you turn the finished block in. As a matter of fact, in my finished quilt, I did every other one this way and then every other one this way just to give it a little bit of variety. And so that's a lot of fun. And as you can see, this block is so easy to put together. I think it's very beginner friendly and a great way to start quilting um, with just straight seams. All right, so that is it for the log cabin quilt block. As you can see, this block is so easy and fast to put together. Now this particular block I made using all of my scraps from my Tilda collection. The quilt behind me was made using a full jelly roll. I used the entire jelly roll, so no waste. And this one was from Fig Tree and I'll put a link below on exactly which one I used because I can't remember off the top of my head. I even got a chance to use my new long arm on this quilt and since I was trying out a brand new machine, I went ahead and just did my plain old meander pattern on it. That's something I'm just really familiar with and I'm glad I did because there are a lot of nuances on this machine and things that I need to practice and so I'm glad that I chose a pattern that I didn't have to think about a whole lot but I still think it turned out really nice. I also used this adorable red gingham binding because I always love a good gingham binding. And then I took that same print and made a little label to add on. Now, Happiness is homemade label with my name on it. Those actually come from Sweetwater. I belong to their monthly tagged club. And so they always send out personalized labels and they're so cute and fun to add to the backs of your quilts. This finished quilt measures about 62 by 62. I actually used one jelly roll plus some of my scraps. So I added one more row of squares along the bottom making mine about 62 by 76. As you can see, I chose to do my log cabins really scrappy and colorful. I think they're so much fun, but I also have some other color options and I'll pop them up on the screen here so you can see some of those varieties. These are all included in the PDF pattern as well, including instructions on how you can get these really cool kind of geometric looking quilts out of the same exact pattern. That's gonna be it for today's video. I'd love to see your log cabin quilts, so make sure to tag me on social media if you make them. I'm at Erica Arndt on Instagram and Confessions of a Homeschooler on Facebook. Thanks so much for joining me for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.